Hi, my name is Bob Mountain. I'm the Senior Vice President of Business Development and Account Services for Name Media in Waltham, Massachusetts. Uh, very happy to be invited to present at the Direct Eye uh, Reseller Summit. Um, we talked today about premium domains. Uh, premium domains are an excellent way for uh, registrars and resellers to uh, provide very high value domains to their customers. Um, it's a way for them to generate increased profits, it's a way for them to retain their customers, and it's a way to improve the user experience. Uh, for registrars that don't provide premium domains today, uh, it's a very crowded namespace, and it's somewhat frustrating for users to try and acquire a really good domain, particularly in the, in the GTLD space, uh, without offering premium domains. So by adding them, uh, again, you're uh, dramatically improving the customer experience. Uh, the other thing is premium domain customers have the highest lifetime value. Premium domain customers spend on average five times more on services like hosting, uh, security certificates, and multi multiple years of registration than a primary domain customer. So by offering premium domains, uh, you are locking in the, the most high value customers uh, that are part of your audience. All right, so we think it's a, uh, it's a great way for customers to, uh, to generate profits and, and improve the user experience. Uh, we also talked about fast transfer. Fast transfer is a revolutionary way uh, for customer for resellers to offer uh, premium domains with a minimum of customer service intervention. The, uh, the transfer process is fully automated, which means the uh, registrar can really concentrate on things like user experience and not necessarily uh, uh, back office customer service. Uh, we lastly talked about premium domains and how they're growing around the world. Uh, uh, Asia is our fastest growing market by far. In the past 18 months, the market has really exploded. So I think the timing is right um, for, for premium domains in Asia. Uh, so we're very happy to be here at this summit and talk more about uh, our passion, which is premium domains. Thank you. If you really talk about supply and demand, you think about 214 million domains in total registered. When you think about that much, uh, how much of the namespace has been taken, a lot of the good ones are, are already good, right? So when your user comes up to, uh, uh, to register a domain, uh, it's just really hard to hand register it because it's not a great user experience. On the other hand, um, uh, the research we did said only 5% of Indian businesses today have a website. Right? So there's a huge amount of companies that haven't come online yet. It varies in other parts of the world. In China, I think it's less than 10%. In the US, it's like 40% are, are online. So no matter where you go, more than half the market hasn't even come online yet. Right? So, and yet, we're, we're in a crowded namespace. So premium domains continue, will continue uh, to become more and more valuable. Um, are those graphics coming up OK? Because I'm here at home and must be. Are they OK? Yeah, OK, great. Uh, so how can this apply? Well, Domains expire, premium domains expire less, so it's a shrinking amount of domains that are being allowed to expire. On the other hand, uh, when you're looking at reselling, uh, there's still a tremendous number of domains that haven't been developed. What does that usually mean? Well, they're usually un either under construction or they're parked, I meaning they're owned by a domain investor and they are for sale or for sale. Um, so we talked about domain values, they continue to increase, right? Domains have been increased, according to IDNX, 72% uh, since 2009. You see a little book there when we had that big correction. Um, within a year, they were uh, back up to where they were before. So the, uh, the, the market for, uh, for premium and the price and valuation of premium domain continues to increase. The premium domain market itself uh, is huge. It is approximately three, uh, I'm sorry, three quarters of a billion dollars in 2012. Right? It continues to increase again. You can see the correction there. Uh, but other than that, like I said, within a year, it will be back to where it was before. So the market continues to increase in value of premium domains continues to go up. It's a very exciting, uh, big, growing, interesting market. So small businesses uh, need premium domains to be successful. When we, we talked about it before, only 5% of uh, micro, small, and medium-sized enterprises in the have non uh, That's only a third worldwide. That means there's two-thirds of the small businesses outside uh, are looking for, uh, uh, you know, haven't come online yet and will be sometime in the future. Uh, our, sort of, our stats show that of the companies that are online, 75% of them are running social media campaigns to drive traffic to the websites. Uh, companies with a strong web presence, the ones that are online, report two uh, double the growth rate, double the revenue increase, and hire twice as many people. So those are very powerful stats that's a source of media. Uh, they ran a survey a year before last, and uh, so very powerful evidence that companies that are online uh, 
uh, are growing faster than countries that are not. And again, we talked about the crowded meat space. There's been um, 11% annual growth rate across all PLDs in terms of registrations. However, we have 800% increase in terms of the volume of sales on average. So again, more examples of why the primary, uh, the premium domain market continues to outpace the primary by new registrations. Okay, so who buys these premium domains? Right? Uh, we're not talking for the most part about you know, million dollar or ten million dollar domains. Those happen, um, but those are the ones you hear about because they're in the press. They happen every now and then. Right? What happens thousands and thousands of times every month are small businesses coming online uh, and buying a better domain for their business. Right? So if you look, roughly half of this is our blood uh, happens with companies that have one to five employees, and most of those have one. It's a uh, sole proprietorship on the way to work. Uh, if you look at combined, 77% uh, have 50 employees in this. Uh, the other thing that's notable here is the very relatively not small number of domain investors. So we, we sell about 10% of our business goes to web domain, right? You can buy domains for a living and flip them. We don't see the growth there. Uh, some people focus on that category. Personally, I think that's uh, short term. I think the real growth is in small businesses and approaching them directly, which is I believe we, most of you sell to. Uh, but when we see about the number of businesses that, that are online and the number that aren't are coming online, and clearly the growth opportunity is with uh, selling directly to small businesses. Um, one of, if not the most important enabler when it comes to the premium domain aftermarket, is fast transfer. So what exactly is fast transfer? Uh, fast transfer has been around for about, it's about 2006 is when we first implemented it, we were first. Uh, essentially what happens with fast transfer is that there's a, uh, a domain can be sold and transferred immediately from the registrar of record to the gaming registrar in a fully automated way. So let's say you have a domain with, you know, whoever, let's say Network Solutions and somebody over at, uh, Go down and buy that. Uh, as soon as they hit buy now, okay, that domain is transferred from Network Solutions electronically and moved into the, uh, the gaming registrar that go down and then transferred into the user's account. Usually it takes maybe 10 or 15 seconds. When it's done, the buyer has control of that domain immediately. There's no, no escrow, okay, no customer service involved. So, why is that important? It's important for you because you can suddenly process hundreds of domain transactions in a month uh, with no additional customer service involvement, no additional escrow. Essentially, it's all automated. The only thing you have at the end of the month is, is the billing that goes out to uh, a few supplier uh, or a portal that you work with. Um, and the domain transfer is all for you. Right? So it's a, it's a really important thing for the aftermarket. And I think that's one of the things that has really enabled the aftermarket to grow as it has, is this whole concept of fast transfer. So it's really, really important. Uh, it just requires a, you know, a fairly minor amount of integration up front, and then you're reading that. Okay, so fast transfer, I'll refer to that again, but it's really important. Uh, who sells premium domains today? Uh, this market is absolutely global. Started off in the U.S. with the big registrars, right? Obviously, GoDaddy, Network Solutions, Registry.com. They went first. Since then, uh, it's exploded. We've seen uh, you know, continued growth in the U.S. where more and more registrars have come on board. Uh, continuing in Europe, just about all the big European registrars are on board yet uh, now. And in the past 18 months, Asia has really come on strong. So, uh, you know, I know from our standpoint, we partner with uh, all of the top registrars in China, uh, the top registrar in Japan, uh, other Asian regions are looking to come on board. And we've seen explosive growth uh, in those regions. And we're primarily talking about .com, asking.com, being very, very attractive uh, in those regions. And CCPLDs are growing quickly. Uh, but the GTLDs have been really the, uh, the, the more of the uh, revenue that we're getting, although CCPLDs are, are catching. So it is a global business uh, and growing very quickly, and new regions are coming. Why should your customers care? Right? That's what it's all about. I might convince you that this is a good thing, but if your customers don't like it, it's not going to get your interest, nor, nor should it. Okay. Search engines like short domains. So we obviously spend a lot of time trying to figure out how our premium domains are treated by the search engines. Do they like them? Uh, does it matter? Right? And we found statistically that it does. There is a very strong, or 
negative correlation. That's wrong, my pardon. It's serial negative correlation between domain length and search engine ranking. And that makes sense. The domain is four words and 30 characters long, right? Um, it's unlikely to be as negative or as tight or as good an indicator of the quality of the website as a short domain. So definite, strong, positive correlation between short domains uh, and search engine popularity. Um, search engines don't like multiple hyphens. If you've got uh, best dash Chicago dash hot dash dog dash cart dot com, you will get no traffic from the search engine. They will put you uh, somewhere in the back. Uh, there's a, a person from Google who's on record as saying this is uh, treated by the search engine as an indicator that the website is trying to fool them. That's the way Google looks at long domains with multiple hyphens. Premium domains do not have multiple hyphens. So these are, and by definition, that means you better by the search engines. Okay. Uh, search engines love exact match. Uh, you've been watching what Google's doing with the new algorithms. This is one of the areas they're looking at very closely. We found, despite new algorithms, that search engines continue to like exact match better. Uh, there is a very strong positive correlation between exact match and search engine rankings, and it continues despite the new algorithm changes by Google. More correlation data. I have taken stats in a long time. Um, and I took stats back in grad school at Rome or Mini Lab. I think they've gotten better now. Uh, but I got a stats lesson when I started looking more closely into this. Uh, I've talked about multiple hyphens, but even if you just have one hyphen, uh, search engines still like hyphenated exact match. Uh, uh, and it still has a positive uh, correlation. Uh, keyword groups. So one of the things about uh, premium domains is they have. They can be keyword rich, they can be descriptive. You can have multiple keywords in a single domain that are descriptive and highly uh, relevant to the domain site itself, the intent of the domain site uh, itself. Uh, search engines really like that, right? If you could link the keywords in the domain name uh, to the application, to the website content, the website, that's going to be very good. It's a very strong uh, correlation there. And as you can see in the bottom, it's a very strong negative correlation. Right? So that's my, uh, that's all I'm going to say for stats for today. Um, so one of the questions that comes up about premium domains is how do new TLDs uh, affect premium domains? Uh, when I went to the ICANN meeting in Singapore, uh, that's when they approved uh, new TLDs. Uh, the ICANN meetings have never been the same because new TLDs is pretty much what everyone's talking about. The ICANN meeting in Toronto after we sent announcement by ICANN that really put a much more of a definitive timetable on UTLDs. Completely changed the tone. Right? People were really looking at this like it's going to happen now. It's not, it will happen someday. Uh, we think that it's, it's going to happen. We'll start to have much more definitive time frame about when. So now, how does that affect premium domains? Obviously, that's a great point to us. If you look today, obviously, there's a limited number of uh, GTLDs and international country codes. Uh, and traditional CCTLDs. Uh, very soon, obviously, our friends at uh, Direct Eye will be launching that at Dr. Dr. W. And it's, but in two to three years, uh, you know, as early as the second half of next year, we'll be looking at 66 new uh, GTLD internationalized extensions, uh, many uh, brands, and hundreds and hundreds of generic GTLDs. So the world is going to change a lot in terms of building things themselves. Uh, what every one of those uh, New TLD applicants, every registry operator uh, is looking for is how do I monetize the premium segment of my new TLD? Everyone right, is interested in, in understanding, uh, if not uh, immediate back. Uh, so what they're interested in is how do I take that premium of the crop and hold it, you know, treat it separate, treat it differently. How do I market those TLDs differently so that I can make sure to capture my share of the profit rather than just letting out um, at standard price and having a, you know, a domain investor or something buy them and then flip it for their compare property. So the TLD applicants and registries want to you know, share in that. Uh, so they're all very, very interested in that. Uh, so we're working with most of them uh, to look at how we help them do that. How do we help identify uh, what those new TL, what those premium domains are. Right? So it's very, very important to them. Um, so again, by participating in the aftermarket, you will be able to participate in that section of new TLD activity because they're all going to do it. And if you're not participating in the aftermarket, 
that there's a whole bunch of UTLB activity that uh, you're going to be standing inside. Right? So it's really important uh, in terms of UTLBs is to be able to uh, you know, play a role in the aftermarket. Otherwise, there's a lot of activity and revenue that's going to come across that you might not be able to, uh, to ship. Um, the technology on how this happens is getting very, very sophisticated. Right? Our algorithm takes uh, 30 some odd different data sources now. And factors that in to this decide what makes a premium TLB and what doesn't. Right? You can eyeball it, and you know you can get it some some of it, but you're going to miss a lot. The algorithm is uh, getting very good at taking data from a wide range of sources, like Google, mentions, uh, scraping, various social media sources. So the technology that identifies which one makes a premium uh, is getting getting very sophisticated and very good. Why is that interesting to you? Well, um, if you're highlighting something as a premium domain on your website, it better be premium, right? It better be really good, right? You do not want to be highlighting domains that are hard. So it's important that these things, that this stuff works, that these premium domains are in fact premium. And that the evaluation is in fact relevant, right? Or okay. You don't want to be promoting uh, a, you know, a launch train with multiple dashes as a $100,000 domain. One of the things about domain owners is they're all in love with their portfolios. Right? They all think that this, or this domain that I'm going to sell, this is going to put my kids through college. You know, any objective person like that, I don't think so. I think you go to Starbucks. But, um, so everybody's in love with So the important thing is the technology will screen that stuff out and make sure that the validation is appropriate. Uh, using things like machine learning, uh, data features, and then a, a team to screen. No, no machine algorithm is appropriate. It's really so that's what's coming. With UTLDs, that's how UTLDs can be involved in the aftermarket because they want to uh, participate in that. Uh, I think the Triple X registry funded their marketing effort, uh, their marketing campaign on launch, essentially with premium UTLDs. Okay, there's the end. Uh, what's in for you, right? Why do you care? Uh, first of all, it's Who's a new right? If you are not selling premium because the bonus can be very very items that, be, that are being sold elsewhere and not on your site. You can make a profit on premium domains. Uh, let's take a guess. Does anyone want to hazard a guess at what the average sales price is, at least on my network, for a premium domain? And remember, remember our audience, we're talking about small and medium sized businesses. You don't think companies for the most part, they're there, but they're much smaller than these. 500? Close. Two thousand over there. I'll go there. Seventeen hundred thirty dollars, right? Global average, right? Um, so seventeen hundred dollars, and your commission will be getting twenty you know, percent on ours, right? So uh, you're making a lot more on a premium domain, quite a bit more than you would on a um, on a primary registration, right? So it's really good, uh, really good. Show. Now, everybody says, every registrar or reseller that I've ever talked with says, $1,700, are you kidding me? My customers will never spend that. There's no way this is interesting to my right? So, the first registrar we ever did, uh, they said that, right? They said, my customers are used to buying a dot-com domain for 10 bucks. You probably know more about that. Um, and they said, we said, okay, fine, cap it at 500. Your customers will not see anything more than $500. We turned it on, and it was selling them like great. Oh, they, said, they didn't say goodness, but you know, they said something. Um, so we increased it to a thousand bucks, right? And they kept going. So we increased it to uh, 2,500. Uh, the cap on fast transfer domains with this registrar, most, is now $25,000. And uh, this is a seven approaching eight figure business for our uh, So, uh, and I've talked to, you know, this is the same for registrar, China. Registrars in, uh, uh, you know, Eastern Europe, right? Uh, it doesn't seem to matter where we, where we launch them. Uh, the market for these things is very strong among small businesses. Uh, because it really makes sense and there's really a payback. And they do a good job of helping your site attract money. And for that reason, $1,700 compared to what you spend on Google AdWords isn't really that much if it helps you get more traffic. Right? So you make money on these premium domain sales. Absolutely, in terms of the commission. 
Um, they have extremely high renewal rates. Over 90% of the domains we sell are built out and in use within 60 days. Right? So people don't buy them and let them hang around and they let them expire. They buy them, they develop them, and then they renew them. Um, premium domain customers have absolutely the highest lifetime value. Our registrars that we surveyed tell us that the average premium domain customer spends five times more on other stuff than a regular primary domain customer. So they buy typically multiple years of registration. So you spend $1,700 buying a domain, you don't want to forget to renew it let it expire. That would be really unfortunate. Um, so people spend multiple years of registration. Like very common. They buy a lot of security certificates. They buy a lot of hosting packages. They buy just a lot of stuff, like I said, five times more. One of the reasons you see the big registrars really uh, putting a lot behind this now, it's getting very prominent space on their on their pages. If you look on any big registrar that's involved with premium domains, and eight of the top ten registrars in the world sell premium domains. Uh, all about uh, the uh, shameless plugs are. Um, 18 of the top 25, right? Most of the big registrars are involved in an increasing number of the smaller ones. I think we have 200 uh, all over. Uh, they're all giving more and more space to premium domains because not just they make money on the domain, but it helps them to uh, make money on other services. The second thing is it's a much better user experience. Right? If you don't offer premium domains today, if someone tries to get a .com, you know what it's like. Right? All the good ones are taken. Right? So they're going to try one, they're going to try another one, they're going to make suggestions. But it's really frustrating. Right. If you can say, if somebody wants MumbaiRestaurants.com, right? if that's available as a premium domain, then put it up there. And say it's available for the next thousand dollars. It's a much better user experience to have exact match or uh, other suggestions of the premium category that are going to be really good. Right? So you give your customers a lot more choice. Of them, right? So you're making money, you give your customer a choice, it's a better user experience. The last thing is this customer retention. Like I said, with all the people getting into premium domains now, if you're not doing it, right, they could be buying these things from someone else and not from you. If they buy them from someone else, then all those services, the hosting and other things that you want to sell to them, uh, you run the risk of having someone else sell it to your customers, right? So, you make money, uh, it's a better user experience, and you get to keep your customers, right? So, um, what's important? There aren't really very many customers, you know, options for you in terms of getting into the space. There's only uh, you know, very small number of customers to do this, but First of all, my advice to you is look very closely at fast transfer. Why? Because uh, that's the most bang for your buck. The best inventory in terms of premium domains is in the fast transfer category. Why is that? Well, um, a domain investor who has a portfolio, who prices it, uh, and then enrolls it into fast transfer, obviously cares about that portfolio. So that quality of those domains tends to be the best. We own one million domains ourselves, and they're all fast transfer single largest premium domain portfolio in the world. Right? So um, other, you know, there, there are other large portfolios of uh, fast transfer domains as well that are part of our network. Um, but fast transfer is where you're going to make the most money. It's the best quality of domain. And it's going to minimize your support. Do a little bit of integration up front, and then most of the work happens behind the scenes and it's all the other. So fast transfer is the number one thing when it comes to uh, the premium domain after market. The second thing is high quality inventory. Quality is far more important than time. You will make a lot more money promoting a fast transfer network of 2.3 million than you will selling a domain of much more questionable quality that's 10 or 15 million. Right? And we can prove that. That's, you know, that's something we hear a lot of uh, Quality is far more important than quantity. Right? So look at that. Secondly, uh, thirdly, sorry, uh, domain integrity process. Right? You've got to make sure that the inventory that you're showing on your site uh, is Essentially, ownership verified. Right? You, the last thing you want to do is sell a domain to a customer, get them all excited about it, and then the owner reneges. Right? It says, ah, oh, I didn't sell that. What are you talking about? Right? So you've got to make sure there's a domain integrity process on the part of your partner that can ensure that you're not going to have uh, failed transactions due to fault the ownership or even fault the verification. One of the things, one of the tricks is in some aftermarkets is people list the domain for sale. And then when someone makes an offer on it, they run up and register it, and then they sell it, right? You've got to make sure the domain is registered. Believe it or not, people do that all the time. Right? So uh, the important thing on a uh, you know, domain integrity process verifies that the domain is registered. It verifies that the person listing it for sale, in fact, owns it. It verifies that the price is fair. Right? And you're not going to value it. That leads to all of it. Um,
user experience. Uh, you should, you should uh, get the benefit of the best practices program. If you're not inherently familiar with premium domains, there are really good ways to do it, uh, and they help you make more money. Uh, so you, your partner should have the best practices program to help you get involved in that program. Uh, scalability, obviously, is reliability. You want something that's got experience uptime, and lastly, support. Something that's got a team that, you know, that can handle your needs. If you have trouble, I get you back. Right. So those are the most important things uh, when it comes to looking at if you want to get involved in the market market, these those are the keys. So um, if you do get involved, um, you know where, where are the important things? Domain search. Putting it on your purchase path is by far the most important thing. That's where three quarters of your transactions are going to occur. When someone does a search for uh, MumbaiRestaurants.com um, or Mumbai Travel or whatever it is, right? Uh, finding the, the, the premium domains that are most relevant to that search and showing those to the user in the search results is going to drive a lot of sales. The exact match drives about 80% of the sales on our part of the network. Um, so does that mean all you should do is exact match? Right? Absolutely not. You've got to show relevant domains too. Why? Because that plants the seed. When you show relevant domains to that person's search, that plants a seed, and then they'll come back later and buy it on the Right, so exact match is key, but uh, relevant suggestions is also important. So domain search exact match and relevant suggestions was important. And lastly, email marketing. You've all got customers, right? You all have, uh, they, they have domains that are registered. Right? Making them aware that there are other domains that are relevant to the, the ones that they own is important, right? So a program where you can go back to your customers and say, hey, you know that, uh, uh, you own India dash travel. But you know that India travel.com is available in the So that's a, yeah, another way. Most of the uh, most of our registered partners are doing this right way now for because every time they do it, they sell it more than um, so that is uh, that is all I have to say about premium domains is uh, really uh, enjoyable experience for me to talk more about what I do and I share a little bit about my company.